Good morning and welcome back to my channel everyone. Today I want to talk to you about uh, a fragrance from one of my favourite perfume houses, Hermes. Uh, those who know me or have followed me on Instagram for any stretch of time understand that it's a house very close to my heart. I've been wearing Hermes fragrances for 30 years. In fact, my YouTube and Instagram namesake, Eau d'Orange Vert, is one of the very first colognes that I wore from this brand. But today I'm going to train our focus on Belle Amie. So Belle Amie was released in 1986 and it was heavily influenced by a book which was written in 1885 by uh, Guy de Maupassant. Now, in this book, uh, the main protagonist, I suppose, he was a young man who slept his way to the top. He effectively bedded a long string of influential women or powerful mistresses in society to get what he wanted. Um, and I kind of really get a sense of why they use that as inspiration for this particular fragrance. It feels very seductive indeed. In fact, when the very first press advertising came out for this perfume in, back in the 80s, it sort of depicted a, a line drawing, like a sketch of Gustav Klimt's. And it was a woman who was lying spent on the bed with her legs spread. And, um, you know, it could have been one of his mistresses, it could have been a prostitute, we don't know. But the ad was supported by the line, Belle Amie est un grand seducteur. Belle Amie is a great lover or seducer. Pardon my French, I'm not a native speaker. But you get the idea. It really does have a wonderful seductive lilt, this fragrance. It's got great top notes, so it has a wonderful rush of citrus in the flight. You have petit grain, we have lemon, mandarin. It gives a bright sort of sharp briskness. And um, it's kind of rendered ombre with cedar. There's this wonderful warm sort of woody impression pressing up from below and that kind of ombre effect is what I sort of feel throughout the uh, life of this fragrance. Uh, the heart notes are wonderful too. There's like a husky carnation um, which sort of renders it a little bit green and uh, peppery. It has sage which lends a wonderful herbaceousness and in the base uh, oak moss. Uh, I discussed oak moss a lot when I was uh, producing my Gelan Darby video. So if you'd like to go back and have a look at that, take a look. Um, it has patchouli and vanilla. Wonderful sort of chypre uh, accords there underlying it and pinning it uh, as a foundation. It is a grand seducer. This one, for me, it uh, evokes a sense of confidence. There's a wonderful self-assuredness about the scent, which I love. Um, it does draw people in closer. It's unusual, it's quite unique, even for a scent that was made in the 80s, it has remained quite singular over the years. That being said, it was uh, first released 86 and probably around the mid, early to mid 90s, I think, discontinued for the first time. Uh, in the time between it being discontinued in the 90s and reissued in the late 2000s or around 2010, uh, perfumer Roger Dove, uh, sort of went on the record, spoke very freely and publicly about his love of this fragrance and he lamented the loss of it at the time. He was bereft of, you know, uh, Belle Amie and it was one of his favourite fragrances. Uh, so he ended up creating a perfume with Pure Distance Parfums called Pure Distance M, which was a direct homage to Belle Amie. So if you've ever smelled Pure Distance M, you'll have a very good idea of what to expect in Belle Amie. And now you also understand that it, uh, Bellamy was the precursor to his work that he did with Pure Distance. I adore this scent. In the winter time, for me, it feels warm, enveloping. It feels textured like a lovely soft cashmere blanket. Uh, but by the same token, it also feels very heartfelt, very much leaning in towards people. It's, um, it does draw you into its gravity a little bit. In the summertime, it's incredibly diffusive. I love the projection and the sillage it leaves. Um, it's been, you know, released and then re-released several times since, and I really can't fault the modern formula either. The modern formula is this bottle here. It's one which uh, you can still buy on ms.com or through various online distributors. And for me, the DNA is still intact. Uh, the only difference, I suppose, is the vintage stuff has benefited from 30 or 40 years of maceration and of course you know some original components like sandalwood or oak moss which uh, 
might have been the good stuff. Um, but this is a fantastic version of. So don't be shy. Give it a go. Have a sniff. Um, I strongly feel that for ladies as well as men, you'll enjoy this. Back in the 80s, it was heavily marketed to men. But I think now in 2022, where our proclivities are shifting, our tastes are changing, our cognizance is opening. Um, I don't assign gender to perfume anymore, and I don't think you should either. I reckon ladies will love this, um, and gents, you know, it's a classic for very good reason. So there you have it. That was a quick rundown of Bel Ami by Hermès. I would love it if you'd go and have a look, and please, if you do, or if you're already familiar with it, leave a comment below. Tell me, do you love the vintage version? Do you love the modern version? Um, what are your thoughts on Bel Ami or Pure Distance M? I love to read those comments. So. Whack them in the comments below and also hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. I'd love to know when, uh, I'd love for you to know when I sort of pop up new videos and um, I'll catch you here next time. Thanks for tuning in.